jump into the other issue that I've raised with the hot lanes and adding that additional lane capacity on the highways is the local road capacity issue when you get into urban Honolulu. Um, I said whether it's King Street, Nimitz, Bishop, whatever it might be, the traffic that are on those is pretty full right now. I mean, how do we deal with that issue if we were going with a managed lane alternative? <clears throat> well, first off, I, you know, I, I would agree with you. That's an issue. Um, and uh, Parsons Brinkerhoff, uh, you know, you folks uh, gave him $10 billion, or oh, 10 million, excuse me, I'm so used to the billions these days, $10 million to, to deal with that issue for the alternatives. And they've finished up giving you one managed lane alternative and five rail alternatives. Okay? I do think that if they could have spent some time on that, as, as did Tampa. I mean, Tampa's distribution of the traffic come, coming off of their hot lanes, managed lanes, is quite extensive, both ingress and egress. And you do, and especially the distribution downtown, that's a, it's a complex traffic engineering problem. And uh, if you were given the, give the task to Dr. Pravadoris, okay, and he could run his, run his models and, and and see what play the what if games as to to ways of distribu distributing the traffic. Um, we'd have that solved. Okay. Well, I guess on that point, like I said, I went down to Tampa because I did want to go see what they did. And like you say, the way that they take the traffic off of their hot lanes and distribute it into town is is great for them. That's it's one of the main reasons that that system works for Tampa and some of the other cities that are looking at doing hot lanes. But again, Tampa was able to take an abandoned warehouse area, railroad right away, and create a brand new six-lane boulevard to get the cars off the hot lanes in town mm -hmm. and, and put them back on. And again, it's still been a concern of mine in, in looking at hot lanes as a model solution for us here. Is I just I really don't see where we have that space to handle offloading the cars that will be on it. And I, I, Mr. Roff sent information about if we had three or six different off ramps and, and getting them to places. But again, it's, we don't have anywhere like Tampa has, and I don't know if you've been down to see it, where you can take that kind of space and have free flowing distribution of traffic without the number of stoplights that we have in our urban center to deal with that situation. Well, with, with, without it being properly studied by you know, traffic engineers, uh, which obviously, just look, just looking at the plan, obviously Parsons Brinkerhoff have not done that. I mean, they are supposedly the experts. They even worked on the Tampa distribution, okay? But they have not done it, d done any kind of work like that here. So if we could, if we could fund uh, Dr. Pravadoris to to do that, and he says it can't be done, then then I would buy that. I, and I, and I, we'll, I think we'll continue, and I will continue that questioning with Parsons. I said, but. I think in any of these studies, the first step into getting to, into the detailed analysis and the engineering analysis is sort of the, the layman's look and say, hey, is this even something that we can try to deal with before we devote a whole bunch of time and money into a system or looking at a solution that right from the start we say really isn't a solution at all? Well, you, you know, the issue is if, if we have not done the engineering in, adequately, and obviously we haven't, Okay, then it, this is not the appropriate time to be making a decision about which kind of technology to use. Okay. That should come when everybody finds that, that it's been reasonably exhausted and that one it is preferable to another. I mean, it's like this whole thing of, of Tampa put, spends 400 billion, 400 million <laughs> building what is a comparable facility. Okay, and, and here we have Parsons Brinkerhoff trying to tell us that it's 2.6 billion. That's, that's a spread. As a businessman, I just don't buy that, you know. I'm, uh, and, and, uh, and I, I think we all had that hesitation when we saw the 2.5 number, but I think it's, it's just as questionable or uneasy for people to say, well, it costs 400 billion there, let's double it and say it's going to cost 800 million to a billion dollars here. I mean. We didn't there's do that. There's got to be, like you say, there's got to be some science to that, and I Agreed. think that's part of what the the task force that the council created is. is we've asked them to look at is, hey, how? 
well, how, they, how was that analysis and is it real? Are there, are there flaws in that analysis that got Parsons Brinker off to the 2.5 number? Well, they don't seem to have a problem with the, with the thought that the soft costs, the consultants costs, architects, etc., is nearly twice as much for this particular managed lanes project as what cost the entire project in Tampa. And they don't seem to have a problem with that. That seems fair and reasonable to them. Okay. As, and I said those are the issues that we hopefully can get yeah. a, a better sense of in the next week to two weeks. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any further questions for Mr. Slater? Thank you.